we will discuss about ipv4 addressing what is ip i means internet p means protocol internet we know international network and p means protocol protocol means set up rules and regulation set up rules and regulation means the language which two party understand we call them protocol the same like i am speaking in english and you understand english because we both know the english language basic that's why we can do communication when system do communication so they need the same protocol an ip protocol now what is v v means version basically and in before 1980 when ieee start to develop an ip address what they do they start from version 1 but they are not successful then they move to version 2 when you check the rfc rfc is a file which keep every record like in asia what we do normally <clears throat> whatever we do we don't keep record but the english people what they do when i was in uk and i joined the university so they say we done research up to this point now you can continue from this point but in india and pakistan in such country we don't have such culture so if you check the rfc rfc i will give you a line you can ch check in rfc every protocol everything has full details so they start from version 1 but they didn't successful so they move to version 2 they give them version 2 name again they are not successful and they move to 3 and the fourth they are successful and they give them name ip version 4 so that's why is ip version 4 after that they start developing version 5 version 5 is still there but it's not open to everyone it's used only for streaming streaming means like watching a line movie uh, either the games etc but it's not openly available and after 1980 in 1990 up onward they uh, introduce ip version 6 and now we can find in our network two type of ip ip version 4 and 6 so this is the full story why we give them the name ip version 4 so it's clear now now let's go further why we need ip address why so basically ip address is like a name you have john name i have ahmed someone is ali someone is something in the whole universe in the whole world whenever somebody born a baby everybody gives them the name whatever their religion whatever because this is identity so when he become grow so what they do so the people can communicate with him the same we do in our network ip address is important is like a logical address like a logical name for systems for node for anything which come under the network so that's why we need ipv4 address so the node can communicate with each other and this identity has their own procedure ip4 address is 32 bit longer number so it means we have almost that much ip addresses because system only know 0 and 1 which we call them binary number system so it's become like these type of number but we cannot use all the ips we will see later on the ip address is in decimal number system the number system which we use in daily life like 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 it's called decimal number system now why if the system no binary number system why the ip is in decimal number system because the lan card will convert this decimal number system to binary number system and the system will understand them like a keyboard we are pressing the real keys but actually system don't know the keys 
whatever you press K, B, C, D, E. No, no, no. System don't know these. They convert them in zero and one form in a, in another, and they didn't uh, the system understand them. The same like a IPv4 address. So when we time in the network address, so the system convert them. Uh, the LAN card, sorry, the interface which we discussed yesterday. Uh, these are the adapter. So whenever I come here, I need to type in decimal number. We have two type of address. If we see, we have IPv6 and we have IPv4. There is no IPv5 because I told you it has to be like this one, IP origin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if I type here, here I'm typing in decimal number system. So this is the way to type them. But there is a procedure, the same like our name. You have a name and then your surname, like a John, I don't know what was your full name, like, uh, okay, showing only John yesterday you sent me. So the last name is normally our surname, the father name and then the grandfather name. Like Saudi, they put their name, then their father name, their uh, grandfather name in such way. We do the same. So means there is a way to give the name, not like any name. So anyone born and you will say, okay, A, B, C. And the other brother is born and you say, okay, Z, Y. No, no, no. There is a way to give them. The same we do with IP4 address, which we will see. But up to this point, now this IP address in four dot decimal notation. One, two, three, four means separated by dot 1, 2, 3, 4 8 bit, 8 bit, 8 bit, 8 bit and 8 bit so it's become 32 bit so IPv4 address in 32 bit and every dot is 8 bit so it's become 32 bit and we type them in decimal number system and then LAN card is convert them now so it means that every range represents 8 bits. So it means to the power 8, the last digits will be 255. So it means we cannot go more than 255 in this one. 256, it will not accept. Because this is the first one, so I will type here 255. If I type 256, it will say no, you can type the address from 0 to 255. Because to the power 8, the last digit is 255. So we know in decimal, we can go up to 255 and the minimum is 0. Here we can type 0 as well, it's okay. Yeah, we can type here 0, we will discuss that later on. It will give me error and also I cannot go more than two to three here and sorry in this one the first one we will discuss that one as well but for time being you have to know that the maximum number we can type 25m and the minimum is zero because every dot decimal notation is 8 bit and it's also called 32 bit address. We call them logical address. We call them network address. We call them variable address. We call them software address. We call them layer 3 address. Many name. Logical means it's a logical name. Network because when we coming on the network, we need an IP address. Variable because it's not a fixed address. Now I have this IP, maybe tomorrow I will give them two. I don't know why it's stopping here. Let me type here. I can give any IP tomorrow. So it means it's variable. And it's not hardware address, it's software address. And also layer 3, which we will discuss in OSI model. Now let's go further. IP4 have five classes one two three four five means class a b c d and e is divided in five classes why is divided in five classes so that we can identify and use them just like a human every human is similar 
but we are dividing in caste. Some are Christian, some are Muslim, some are this, some are that. But the end of the day, we all are human, so that we can identify each other. The same way IP4 are divided in five classes. Class A is the biggest one, then class B, then class C. And we cannot use class D and E, I will tell you why. Class A, B, C are called unicast ranges. I told you yesterday four terms. Unicast means one-to-one -one communication. Multicast, one-to-many communication. And broadcast, one-to-all communication. And any cast, one-to-nearest. So class A, B, C can be assigned to the interfaces. Here we can assign them to the interfaces. Only class A, B, C. If you check class A start from 1 to 127, this is the biggest range. Then class B start from 128 to 191. Then class C start from 192 to 223. It means the last digits which we can use is 223. And the minimum digits is 1. I told you we can type 0. But I didn't say in the first digits. Here you can type 0, it's okay. In the last digits here you can go up to 255. But not in this one, in the first. Here you can go from 1 to 2 to 3. This is the biggest number you can type. 2 to 4, it will give me error. That no, you can only try from 1 to 2 to 3. But again there is exceptional one. In the middle, there is one, two, seven. We cannot type this one as well, which I will tell you is called do back address. So it means that here we can go from one, two, two to three, excluding one twenty seven. And here I can go from zero to two to five, and zero to two five, two to five, and zero to two to five. The first one is representing the class. And as we know, we cannot go more than C class. Because class D, which is start from 2 to 4 to 2, 3, 9, is a multicast. And I told you what is multicast. We cannot use, but later on, RIP version 1, RIP version 2, we will see EIGRP, OSPF, they are using this IP. Even our system is also using this IP. If I check go to command prompt and type r-a you will find many multicast addresses up to this one and here as well systems are using for their own communication but we cannot assign this range to the interface so it's a multicast range the same as class e class e is an experimental use is still under experiment nobody is not allowed to use them excluding the last IP which is 255 255 255 and 255 four time which is used for broadcast and you will see the broadcast IP this is the last IP of class E again we cannot assign this IP to anyone we can test the system in the entire entire domain our entire network we can use this IP to ping if all is pinging it means and for many other purpose we, but we cannot assign here because I told you we cannot go to 45 is not possible to type here so these are the classes to use them as much you need it class A B C D E but we cannot use class D, we cannot use class E. So it means, I told you we can use up to this point of IP, but no, we cannot use D, we cannot use E. Now let's go in a further, loopback address, which is fall under class A127. We cannot use this IP as well. Why? Because this IP is reserved for testing to test your protocol, to test your LAN card, to test all these protocols are working or not, to test yourself, to test your system. Hey. 
to be used this IP for this purpose. So we cannot use loopback address. This is only to check our protocol and our system is working or not working. How we can go to the system CLS and we can ping 127.0.0. IP. So if ping is coming, so it means my protocol is working and my LAN card is working. I can use any IP. Not this two as well, three as well, up to two five five, and even I can use this to change them. So the whole range is reserved for testing, and we call them loopback. So if I type loopback and dash four means IP four, I will receive reply from one twenty seven, and we call them local host as well. Local host again, it will reply. Local host is used by developer when they are designing websites, so they make the system as a server and test their PHP and ASP. So they type local host in the browser and access their own system. So we call them local host, we can call them loopback, we can call them, and you can ping from any IP. This IP is like a when we are delivering speech and something. So normally we test the mic by say hello, hello, testing, testing. So loopback address is the hello, hello, testing IP. For troubleshooting and checking your own system before you go to check other systems. If your system is not okay and you are pinging other systems, so it's not a good idea. So it's called loopback address. So it means we cannot use class D, we cannot use class E, and we cannot use class A last IP range, which is reserved for testing. Let's go further. I told you unicast address, one to one communication, multicast, one to many, broadcast, one to all. Now coming to subnet mask. What is subnet mask? When you type IP, there must be subnet mask as well. IP without subnet mask is nothing. If type 1.1.1 and click here, it get automatically subnet mask here. Basically, subnet mask is must. It identifies the network portion and the host portion. Subnet mask telling us in this whole IP what is the network portion and what is the host portion. What is network and host portion? So let me open a notepad. If I type here 0 double 1 and any number and 0 double and 0 9 1 and any number and 0 9 2 any number. And if I ask you what is this IP, you will say this is Riyaz IP because you know this by network. If I say this IP belong to you, uh, sorry, this phone number, you will say this is belong to India. And if I say this IP, you will say this is to Pakistan because of country code and because of city code, this one. So this city code and country code is like a network. Everyone in India, their number will be start from 091. Whatever, if he is PMR, what is AMR, whatever, whatever he is. Doesn't matter. His number will be start if you calling him from any other country to India. There, you have to type 091. This is a country code which is same for all. In the same case with Pakistan 092, 0092, basically I type just zero. In Riyaz, everyone have the same 011 and the rest of numbers will be different. Nobody in Riyadh have the same phone number, but the city code will be similar. The same is in every IP. Every IP has a network portion which has to be same in the entire systems.
and the host portion which will be different network cannot be changed if you change the network you need a router and the host cannot be same as i told you nobody have the same number in the entire ria city either if you take a number 05a this is the number 058 and any other number if you go to zen office and you tell him that i need a number 01234567189 they will refuse no they will say the first three digits is our code zen 0500 is stc number and the rest of the number they say that you can choose in every ip so by default class a is 255 subnet mask when i type 1 so it's give me 255 when i type class b class b start from 128 if i check it's get two time and when i type 192 class c any ip it will get three time this is the default one we can subnet it we will discuss that later on so class a default subnet mask is 255 class b default subnet mask is 2 time 255 and class c subnet mask is 3 time 255 and these subnet masks will help us to identify network portion and host portion how let me give an example 1.2.3.4 this is class a and we know class a subnet mask is 255.0.0 network id host id and broadcast id the same as class b let me take class b 130 6677888 Plus B means sixteen. Sixteen means two five five two five five dot zero dot zero. Network ID, host ID, and broadcast ID, and the same as class C. Let me take two hundred, two hundred, two three five. Any IP you can take. Twenty four, twenty four means two five five two five five two five five dot zero. network id host id broadcast id now coming to the first one class a this subnet mask will help us 255 is un coming under 1 so i will type 1 under 2 there is 0 under 3 there is 0 under 4 there is 0 sorry this is 0 so this is my network if i am using class a the first digit has to be the same in entire switch network and the rest of three i can type any ip any digits i want from 0 to 255 now coming the host portion host means i will opposite 0 2 3 4 means this is my host name i can type 2 i can type 3 i can give them any number between 0 to 255 it can be the same and cannot be the same up to systems but every system ip will start from 1 i will show you now for class b 130 because under 130 there is 255 under 66 there is 255 n770 n880 host id will be 007788 it means if i am using class b i can only change the last two digits and the first two digits is a network like a country code it has to be the same for class c under 200 there is 255 
under 2 there is 255 and under 3 there is 255 and 0 0 0 0 and the last digit is 5 if I am using class C to make a network the first three digits has to be the same otherwise it will not work let's do it these are my system my IP is this one so by law I am using class C so it means 192.168.1 these three digits has to be the same and the last has to be different so this one is 1 it's okay 1 is okay let's go to this one okay S2 is good because it's also class C so class C means the three digits has to be the same to communicate which is they are so let me check them it is working or not let me ping from here to here yeah it's successful it's working but I, if I change any IP between the first three digits, suppose 5, it will not work. It's not going, it's fail. Because he said I'm a different network, different subnet. The first three digits has to be the same. Yeah, it will work. If you change this one as 5 as well, now it will work. It's okay now. It will go, the traffic will go now. And it will say 6 pull. <coughs> because the three digits has to be the same in class C case. If it is a class B, the first two digits has to be the same. If it is class A, the first digit has to be the same. Then you can design a network. The other thing we cannot keep the same. If I make this two, it will not work. Let me make them real time. It's a the address is already used in the network. It's like a, you have two brothers and you give them the same name. Because I put the same address which this system has. I just copy and paste. So the rule is the host portion has to be the different and network has to be the same. So this is network mask. Class A has 255, class B has 2 time, and class C has 3 time by default. We discuss about the network. Network address is the network address which has to be the same in the entire system. And the host has to be different. Now coming to private addresses. We cannot use class D, we cannot use class E, we cannot use 127. Now there is another story, private addresses those addresses which is not routable which is not allowed on the internet which we can use inside in our organization we call them private addresses which is free and freely to configure inside the network and the whole world you will see these three addresses everywhere in organization you go any organization in the world you will find these three addresses they are inside network Because this is the way to configure network. Rest of all IP are called public IPs. In class A, any IP start from 10, any IP start from 10, we will call them private IP. In class C, any IP start from 192, but the second digit is 168, we will call them class C private address. But in class B, there is a little bit doubt. 
any ip which is start from 172 we cannot say is private neither we can say is a public if the second digit is from 16 and ending in 31 then we can call them private it means any ip 172.1 will be public 2 3 4 up to 15 is public ip but 16 to 31 it means 32 will be also public ip so these three we can design any network by these three ip inside because these ip are not allowed in internet inside and gns3 and packet tracer you can configure you can do even i you will say let me check my ip i am connected to the internet let me check my ip oh i have private ip because it's starting from 192.168 but i am connected to the internet through private addresses and i just told you we cannot use this ip on internet actually my ip address what is my ip address this is my public ip the ip i am using is for inside everywhere in saudi arabia when you go you will find the same address inside so these private address is saving us inside we are using this is like a car one car in house so when you go outside to the market and you ask your mother your father your brother your sister your cousins at home that what you need and you bring all the stuff from the, for them from the market from the outside world and give it to them so private addresses do the same job for us these private addresses only go up to the router and router has two interfaces one side is public ip and n side is 192.168.100.1 in my case so this private it means i can connect 254 system and using only one public ip it's like a one car and you have a joint family system where 256 people 254 people are living and you going outside to the market and bringing stuff for them maybe clothes anything whatever they need your mother your father your cousins your sons your daughter so if somebody asks how you go they will say no 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 i didn't go outside i just go up to the door i give the list of everything to my brother and he bring for me and i give list to my son and he bring for me so this one ip is doing all the job but this private addresses are saving us because very limited ip in the world and still we are we can use internet because of we are using inside these private addresses now i will add another private range which is called a pipa automatic private ip addressing which is always start from 169 254 always <coughs> and it's only work in window system and window system when your lan card is not reachable to the dhcp server either you didn't assign any ip suppose i didn't assign any ip okay okay it will get a pipa look at r2 configuration ip 169254 so in window system there is a concept like a ram jani movie when you don't know your name and you keep your name as a ram jani so this is ram jani ip in shahrukh khan movie so a pipa is ram jani ip either pk amir khan movie which they both don't have any identity so they keep their name themselves the same as a pipa when your lan card didn't get any identity because he will be on the network and he need a name to communicate with other guy so he will get this ip automatically which is always start from 169254 but this is not routable again 
it will not work on an internet but you can develop your inside network so we call them a pipa automatic private ip address another thing about the ip we have two type of ip class full ip and class less ip class full when you use the default subnet mask class a is 255 class b is 22 times 255 and class c is 3 times 255 class less when you are using different subnet mask for different class like before 10 was class full so the subnet mask was one time 255 but here is become two time it means you done a subnetting so when you do subnetting so then we cannot call them class a we call them class less it means they don't have any class because we broke on their classes so these are the two ip <coughs> now moving to the next part is mac address the one which we discussed was the ip address what is mac address media access control every lane card in the world just like our fingerprint in the whole world every person have different fingerprints the same is in every LAN card either it is a blue a bluetooth LAN card is a wireless LAN card either a wire LAN card they have a fixed number 48 bit address which we call them MAC address you will say why we need this MAC address because switches communicate using MAC addresses switch don't know IP address I'm not talking about the layer 3 switches layer 2 switches power layer 2 switches they do communication using MAC addresses which is a 48 bit address we just study about IP 4 address was what 32, 32 bit IP address was in decimal number system but MAC address is in, in hexadecimal number system. Hexa means 16 digits, 0 to 9, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. Basically, it's a 12 digits number. If you go to CMD, CLS, you can type git MAC. It will give you all the MAC addresses of our UN interface because I have six interfaces. So they give me all the MAC addresses. We will discuss why I am telling you is uh, MAC address and it's written here physical address. It's the same thing. Either you can go to the interface, click on any interface, go to detail and you can find the physical address here as well. So I have six interfaces. Every LAN card has their own MAC address or physical address which is 12 digits if you count them as 12 digits but 48 bit 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 let me copy them the first six digits are first 24 digits 24 bit are six digits call them OUI organization unique identifier make address lookup if you type in google and you go to any website and type your mac address they will give you the vendor okay so this one is no vendor let me copy any other one <coughs> this is a vmware and it's true I'm using VMware. So it's type it's the company is how they find out from the six digits, which is called organization unique identifier. Maybe there is a website which has only OUI. No, this is also taking full. So let me is better to yeah this one. It said no need to type. First six digits is enough. 
it says a VMware and it's true from the first six digits are 24 bit is found out the company because the first six digits is written here as well is called OUI organization unique identifier and the last digits the company are changing it's called serial number So this is the way we type MAC address. MAC address call them 48-bit address. We call them hardware address. We call them physical address. We call them fixed address. We call them BIA. We call them one end address. We call them 48-bit address. We call them NIC address. We call them Ethernet address. We can call them data link layer address. We call them layer two address. We call them manufacturer address and we call them adapter card address in window you see is call them physical address when you go to linux here is call them ethernet address when you go to linux other version is call them hardware address everywhere but the number is the same is 12 digits is 12 digits in router we call them burn address if i go to any switch they also call them burn address show interface 0 slash 0 slash 1 look at bia address also hardware address and bia burn n address means it's already burned on the interface switch every interface has different MAC address if you have 24 bit switch so every port has a different MAC address as many you have interfaces every interface has a physical address So in window we can type git make or type ip config slash all ip config slash all sorry ip config slash all to find out the make addresses either call them physical addresses either type git make either type by go to interface which i show you and switch and router we show interface and you will find out BIA burn and address in Linux if config they will show you hardware address which I show you here I type if config in Linux it say hardware address and some Linux system they will show Ethernet address but it's the same thing because later on we will use them switches use this MAC addresses Now let's move to another topic. We will start from switch and then we will go to router because CCNA is divided in three parts router, switch, and then all together many other things. What is switch? I told you at the beginning in the first lecture switches a device which connect more than two system switch can work on layer 3 and it can work on layer 2 if it is working only on layer 2 we call them data link layer if it is called on layer 3 we call them layer 3 switch or multi layer switch is do routing as well and switching as well if it is a layer 3 we use them to connect end devices end devices we discussed yesterday like a pc laptop printer access point phone server fix machine we connect all these devices to use switch switch send and receive the information for the same network we just discuss about same network because we need them this Cisco switch switch work on full duplex mode 
it can send and receive the traffic on the same time it will not collide switch overall is a one broadcast domain and every port is a separate collision domain which we also discussed yesterday first time cisco switch will broadcast and then it forward traffic by unicast but only for five minutes now we will go further yesterday i just told you this second time it will be unicast no only for five minutes if within the five minutes they do communication so it will be unicast if they are taking more than five minutes more than 300 second or five minute then they have to broadcast again in two cases switch will do what if they receive first time a packet it will be broadcast this is the nature of the switch this i am sending packet from here to here because this this system first time he don't know he will broadcast this packet is broadcasted but second time it will be unicast is unicast now is successful also in the case of broadcast packet if i send a packet for broadcast sorry let me if i sending 255 255 255 255 and source i don't know what is my source on any 268.2 for how many time five time this packet will be broadcast because this is a broadcast packet when it start is not started yet it started now this packet will be broadcast and the packet will come also broadcast and the answer will be also broadcast so it means in two cases switch do broadcast when they receive first time unicast packet because they don't have the record and when they receive broadcast packet and i told you it's keeping the record for 300 second if 300 second is passed suppose 300 second and i'm not doing communication between this system and this system now switch has the record if we go to switch they have a chip which called make address table let me open them why is not opening okay show make address table look at all the make addresses are here it's learned dynamically it's a chip which we call them make address or came table content addressable memory they store all the mac addresses so that they can do unicast communication between these systems but if these system are not doing communication for 300 second it will be wash out from this mac address you will say why because this chip is very they can store few addresses so if it's keeping record of everyone maybe the switch is attached in the hotel or airport so everybody is going every day so a time will reach when this make address table will full and it will not keep any more record so what will happen in this way the switch will start broadcasting and we have also such type of attack as well which call make flooding attack which switch become hub so that's why it's deleting the addresses it learn dynamically but if i am not doing anything for five minutes between this system it will be washed out and again what i will do i need to broadcast the first packet again which i didn't tell you yesterday when we go further then i will explain you more now how the switch do communication i just show you the make table they are doing communication by make addresses they don't know ip address when the packet reach here they check the make address 
If they don't have the MAC address, they will store in their MAC table. If they don't have, they will broadcast the packet. And after that, they will keep the unicast, which is called MAC address learning process. So switch do communication by MAC address. And aging, I told you, is for 300 seconds, which aging command is not available. So let me go to here and show you the aging command. We will configure switch later on. Anyhow, I'm just giving you an introduction. Frame switching, I told you how they learn the MAC address. So in first time the switch receive the packet, it check their MAC address table, like in this case. Now the switch has the record for every port. Here 0 slash 1, 0 slash 1 was this system connected. 0 slash 2, 0 slash 3, up to 6 port is connected. So in this case, if the packet is arrived here, from here to here, suppose, it will come here to the switch. Okay, because we, I changed the IP, so let me change them to 1. They are not in the same, and I remove the IP from here. 192.168.1.1 Now let me do it. Here to here. There is a source MAC address because switch do communication on layer 2. On layer 3, the IP address is working. So this is the source IP and this is the destination IP because switch already have the record. So this packet will be unicast. Okay, I think so the record is deleted this way. If I check only four before it was more because five minutes is over. So first time it broadcast, but if I again I do communication, now the switch has the record, it will be unicast. So it's do communication like this way, which we call them frame switching. Frame flooding, I told you. When switch receive the MAC address, which they don't have the record like here to here. Because you don't have this record, it will broadcast. It's broadcast system. And now unicast. Now he got a record. It's called frame flooding. Now let's go further. We have two types of switches, modular or fixed switches. Modular, non-modular and fixed switches means, non-modular means you cannot remove and add anything, whatever port they have, they, that's it, or any anything is fixed. You cannot change anything. If it is 24, it is, will be 24. You can use them, otherwise you, you cannot use them. Modular switches, where you can remove the port and put another port, you can extend the port, is called them modular switches. It's dynamic means you can put and remove many things. But in fixed switches or non-modular switches, you cannot do such things. Router or switch, whatever, both devices, just like our laptop, you know, our laptop which is in front of us. If you open it, you will find a fan, you will find a motherboard, you will find a RAM, you will find a hard drive, you will find a flash drive, you know, everything is similar. The only change between a router or switch in our laptop is, in our laptop, we are using graphical window. And here we are using text-based window, that's it. It's starting the same like our system start. When I click on the button, our system start. Here when you take the switch and you click here, it's also starting. Okay, in real time, let me, it's starting. It loading the operating system to the RAM. The same our system do the same job. The only thing is here is text based and we have graphical window. 
I told you when you open a switch or router inside you will find a CPU we have also CPU we have a RAM so router and switch has the RAM we have non-volatile random access memory so the same as by router and switch we have a flash memory they have a flash memory we have a read only memory they have a read only memory yeah the only thing is we have both CLI and graphical they have only limited graphic and mostly CLI CLI means command line interface this is the difference between from outside you will find a switch how many port you have it is a ethernet either it is a fast ethernet is a gigabyte a 10 gig interfaces it will be written here if it is e is means ethernet 10 megabit per second speed if it is if it means fast ethernet means 100 megabit per second speed if it is written gig it means 1000 gig 10 gig 20 gig 30 gig and so on many new switches here you will find a console port where you will plug this is console to first time configure the switch and many other port you will find here and this one is for SAPs SAPs is extra module to convert them and here you will find some button start button synchronization you will find many other things which we call them mode button as well there are more button to change the duplex or full duplex all these things here which we don't do normally so here is a console and this is a console cable which we discussed yesterday we first time plug this in the console in the other end of our laptop and then we open a putty and access the switch and we configure them first time like this way this is a console cable but because we don't have a serial port anymore in laptop so we buy a converter I told you about how switch work how they learn the MAC address and for how long yeah I was here to show you for how long it will keep the address if I go to switch console show MAC address table aging time it say I can keep the record for 300 seconds which is the default 5 minutes you can convert them make address aging time suppose I make them 200 do show make address aging time it says now is 200 and you can remove and you can make them more as well so we check the learning how the make address is learned first time is broadcast then it keep the record then next time it will be unicast but for five minutes I think so now the these MAC addresses will be washed out let's see still there because this five minute is not yet completed until we will study and it will remove automatically forwarding if the switch receive the MAC address means the packet from one switch from one PC it will check the MAC address table and it will forward to the interface where they want to go so they do forwarding like this way In loop we will see how they prevent the loop now every interface we can change them their speed their duplex and description these three things is normally required suppose if I go to any interface 0 slash 1 sorry 0 slash 1 I can change the speed by speed command Then means Ethernet, fast Ethernet and auto. Auto it will adjust themselves automatically with the other system. By default is auto as well. Also duplex. I told you three type uh, two type of duplex yesterday. Full duplex and half duplex. And automatic it will adjust themselves. Full duplex by default is working on full duplex. But maybe you are connected to the hub and you want to change, maybe your switch is not working. Then you can come here and make them half duplex. Sometime, nowadays it's not required, everywhere you will find switches. No more hub, 
but in case if the system is not working in any other way so you can change the in also description this port is connected to server this description will help you for troubleshooting if i come here am i am a new to the organization so this will help me be that this interface is connected to the server so description is very good to give them every port so that next time you have any issue you can easily troubleshoot them svi switch virtual interface we call them switch virtual interface in layer 2 we use svi show ip interface brief this call we learn what is call svi switch virtual interface because layer 2 switch we cannot assign ip to the interface let me go to any interface configuration 0/1 ip address it will not take it's a unrecognized command dhcp this is something else snoopy is not ip address because this is layer 2 switch a layer 2 so layer 2 port layer 2 port we cannot assign ip but we need to communicate with the switch like maybe i need an ip address to the switch to make a telnet make a ssh to snmp then we create svi vlan1 which is the default one already and i will assign ip address here no shutdown now i have ip to this switch to communicate to this switch show ip interface brief here is is called svi but in layer 3 we also create svi for other purposes well to do networking between different vlan so we create here svi for this purpose suppose interface vlan 1 sorry interface vlan 1 ip address 1.1.1 255.0.0 no shutdown and interface vlan 2 and ip address 2.2.2 255.0.0 no shutdown now i created two svi So if I am connecting to this layer two switches, different interfaces here and different here, and I enable routing, IP routing, then I can use this VCI, so they both can communicate. But after typing this command, so router this switch will become router as well. So for this purpose, we also use SVI. So SVI is, is nothing but assign IP address to the interfaces to VLAN one, VLAN two, VLAN ten, VLAN twenty for routing purpose. Either to access management the switch by SSH by Telnet by SNMP. We call them switch virtual interface or SVI. Now, as I told you, in every switch you will find a RAM read-only memory. You will find random access memory. You will find NVRAM and flash memory. Where we can check the same which we check in our system. We go to our system and somebody asks you how much RAM you have. So I came here and I say I have 16 GB RAM. I have i7 processor. I have Windows 10 installed. and i was 64 bit operating system normally we coming here and switch we do the same and switch we going show version command and show version command you can find your operating system version you can find your operating system you can find your model 
iOS Enter Operating System. And here you will find all your memory and everything. <coughs> this is my memory. Combine both. And I will find the other flash memory and everything here as well. This is my flash memory in byte. And this one is many things. This is my flash memory. NVRAM and other memory I need to find. So better to show you here as well. Show version. So I have version 15. This is Linux based. This is my iOS. And here is the RAM. This is my NVRAM 16 KB. And there should be another RAM which is not mentioned here in this one. Show version also mention you that for what reason last reload was happened in the system. So it's also good to find out if somebody asks you, can you tell me for how long this switch is on? You can check here the uptime is 15 minutes. And if they ask you, what is the reason that last time the switch was rebooted? Again, you can find from show version. Now it's written unknown reason. So from here you can find many things, which I mentioned in the screenshot. This is the version. This is system uptime, this is my flash memory, this is my RAM, this is my NVRAM and this is flash memory. This is a, a flash a image location, sorry. Auto MDIX I already told you yesterday. Automatic medium dependent interface crossover is called MDIX. It's a sensor in the switches which work on both cross cable and straight cable this is the command to type them mdix if you don't need just put no mdix it will only work on the standard cable if you want that it can work on both cable then you have to use mdix auto which is on by default so this was the switch basic now Let's start the switch. You can use two things. We already discussed to change the duplex. You can use the speed. You can change the description. And you can check the description by show interface status or show interface. Let's do basic switch configuration. You can use two things. Either packet tracer or GNS3. I can provide you both set setup. Many commands are missing in the switch, uh, in the packet tracer. In the GNS3, you will find all the stuff. So let me, you may use packet tracer. This is just normal application, new, open, edit, copy, paste, undo. Here is, you can put to simulation mode, you can use them real mode. Here you will find the router, this is switches, this is bridges this is wireless device firewall and other system here is the system these are the cable time and special some devices which is used for ipv6 configuration and these are the toolbox which whatever is mentioned here is also here from the switch you can drag any type of switch here if you need multiple press control and click one two three four as much you need it and press escape so it will remove the same is for cabling as well if you don't know the cable the first one is take and connect them if you need multiple control and click connect click connect click connect click and connect and click and connect but if you know you can take the straight cable because we can connect them by straight cable as well and we can connect them by cross cable as well.
So let me start one switch from here. CLI command line interface. Here, the first mode is user mode, and the sign of this mode is this greater than. It means you are then the user mode. You can run only limited command here, very few command, which you cannot do any changes in the switch. These are the command which you cannot do any changes, like enable, disable, logout, ping, resume, show, tell net. There is no such command to change the router. It's also if you type question mark, it will help you. Like a question mark, it show me all the command. Even though it's mentioned here, it say enable to go to privilege mode. Yes, this I want. So I type E, but my spelling is not okay. So I can type question mark. From E, two things are started: enable and exit. So I will type E N and question mark. It is the only command start from E N. So it's enough. I can enter. Now I am in enable mode or privilege mode. Here I can type question mark to show the command. There is more command. This mode we can take backup and restore of the device. We can use them for show command most of the time. And it's written configure to go to configuration. It's helping me automatically. The tab button will auto complete the command if it is distinguished. So C U N is not because from C U N two things are starting. So I say if in my press tab, so it's going to configure. If I put question mark nearby, it will show me the command which is start from configure. When I put space bar and question mark, it will show me next command. So next command I can type terminal or carriage return. Means this command is also enough. Okay, enter enter. So now I am in configuration mode. This hash and this config show me that I am in configuration. From configuration mode, I can go to anywhere. Suppose the first command we will use host name. I just type H O and tab button. It are to complete. And I change the name to S W. It's changed now. If I don't need, just type no host name. It will return. Now you will face three type of error. The first type of error is suppose I type C and enter ambiguous command. It means from C many things are starting. So is ambiguous. What you want to achieve? What command you need? The second command is I say clock and enter. It's a incomplete command. Means from clock to onward, there is many things to set which you forgot. Two type of error. So ambiguous command it means many things are starting from this command. Incomplete means there is many things to set. So I type A B C. It say no, it's invalid. These are the three type of error you can face in any switch and router. Either you will receive. It say ambiguous command. Maybe you will get incomplete command. And the third, you will say invalid input. Then the input you put, and it will also show you this nishan, uh, this sign that the error is somewhere here. So you may know these three type of error. Now let's move. And put the password. Just like when we buy a new laptop, we type a password, either mobile phone. So we put the passcode or password or fingerprint or any other thing. So nobody else can use them. So we change configuration. <coughs> Config. Change the host name to SW. The first password which we will cover is console password. 
where we plug the console cable and log into the switch. The command is line console. We have console and we have line as well in VTY. Because console cable is only one cable, so I will type zero. And here I will type password one two three on a console and login. Exit, 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 exit the command to move from exit from the mode. Now it's asking the password. I cannot enter to the switch. One two three was the password. Now I enter to the user mode, enable mode, configuration mode. Also keep in mind you cannot jump from the first one two three and you say I'm going to configure. No, it's saying now because I type a command which is not the command of this mode. So what I can type control shift six. Control. Okay, let me control shift and six. This is the command one, two, three, four, five, six to go out from this mode. If it is hang like suppose it's hang, I cannot type anything. If I say control shift six. is come out now so you have to go by this way like a stair enable then configuration so I put a password on console line console 0 and password 123 and login login command is must if you no type no login it will not ask the password password is there but I can enter so login command is must line console zero and login now it will ask the password exit now it's asking the second i'm saying no 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 i need a username and password as well so for this purpose go to configuration first generate to create username suppose admin password 123 create another user admin 1 password anything you want 123 as many user you want to create admin 2 and password 123 any password you can give now I will go to line console 0 and will say login local rather than to type a password and then local no need a password then because login local means check the local database whatever is here they can log in through console so this is must login local if you type login separately so it means you have to type a password then if you type login local then no need a password here every user is their own password exit 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 now it will ask username as well to so username as admin password is one two three enable show user so now admin is login you can exit and check another user admin one enable show user sorry show user now admin one is login